a viral pandemic, tracking apps, politicians talking about mandatory vaccinations, economic recession. I think we are looking at the perfect storm. Hi there, I'm up here in uh, the old forest cave and uh, if you are following this channel uh, you have seen me here before it's a wonderful place up in the oldest part of my local woodland um, I was up early this morning and I wrote a note mostly to myself about the current situation with uh, the pandemic and uh, the virus and uh, maybe not so much about the virus but I'm more concerned as you know if you're, you're following this channel with uh, the changes that uh, seems to come with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read my note to you and um, I'll probably put uh, uh, my, while I read, I'll, I'll use that, that as a voiceover while I make some coffee because then you won't have to look at my, uh, my boring face all the time, you know. <laughs> um, but okay, let me read my note and uh, yeah, so the perfect storm. I believe this is the perfect storm uh, and I'll tell you why uh, because we now have several factors that when you combine them create the perfect environment for civil unrest maybe even violent uprising of the people against the so-called elite. I will tell you which factors that are now creating what could become the perfect storm. A viral pandemic. No matter what you believe, and I know there's a bit of controversy going on uh, about the seriousness of the pandemic itself, but uh, concerning these matters, it, it doesn't really matter what you believe. The only thing that matters here is that most people believe we do have a pandemic, and this seems to justify some of the other factors I'm going to talk about. We now have recession and we could go into an economic depression because of plummeting oil price, at, at least in Norway, that's a main reason for the, the recession. Uh, we, because of the lockdowns of entire countries and a widespread fear in the populations. We now have a lot of people facing difficult times. We already have an incredible growth of the unemployment rate. But here's the thing, people have been used to living like kings and queens, at least in a historical context. People, at least in the West, are not used to real hardships. They certainly are not used to starving. This creates desperation. I think we will soon start to see violent riots of a magnitude not seen for a long time. And now we're at uh, number three control of the population and taking away their rights. So the governments roll out their tracking app, they put you in house arrest, they let the police harass people for no good reason, they set democracy aside for a time period they can prolong for as long as they like. Can you imagine if they tried to do that before the pandemic? No, they wouldn't have even dared tr to try it. Number four, fear mongering. Now I'm not going to sit here and say the coronavirus is not is not dangerous. It is to some people, but the level of fear mongering we see in the mainstream media now is just ridiculous. Here in Norway now, we seem to have gotten through the whole pandemic. So now the angle from the government is that we need to do this and that and not lower our shoulders. Because if we do, the virus will come back. Number five, mandatory vaccines, or also called forced vaccination. 
This will be the straw that breaks the camel's back. It is very likely that the governments will say that you either have to stay isolated or you take the vaccine in order to be allowed out of your house and back to normal life again. I will tell you this, a minority of the populations will refuse. And as I have said numerous times, this is not about whether you are against vaccines in general or not. It is about bodily integrity. Because if you allow someone else to decide what will be injected into your body, you no longer have bodily integrity. You have actually become the property of your government. Now a substantial minority will refuse and they will get locked out of vital functions of society. Schools, workplaces maybe, stores. And this leads to my next point. Number six. A parallel society. Now we already have parallel societies looking at some immigrant populations but now we will have a parallel society consisting of people with property, the ability to produce food and also at least in the USA that minority will probably be armed. Some of them will be, and I know the more political Politically correct out there don't like to admit this. Some of them will be highly educated. You will have teachers, doctors, etc. If we look a bit further into the future, my prediction is that these parallel societies could very well end up as a lot more successful and prosperous than the general population. This could even lead to uh, number seven. The government moves in to grab the property of the parallel societies, taking what they have by force. But this will not happen without resistance. I think this could even lead to civil war. So, um, there might be other factors in play here as well. And I may be wrong when it comes to how many people will choose to live in a parallel society. I really don't know. One thing is that most people, they seem to be tied up in, uh, in debt and they have to go back to work because they would not be able to pay their bills if they don't. So they take the snake oil, they bow their heads and let me tell you, it will be very sad to see. I believe we are facing a new world order where we must take measures to prepare ourselves and to protect our rights because the governments will certainly not. So, what can you do? First of all, get rid of as much debt as possible. Secondly, don't buy that new car. Don't buy expensive stuff. Don't buy things you don't need. Number three, move out of areas where the population easily can be controlled. By that, I mean cities. Number four, start growing your own food. Get some chickens. <laughs> You don't need much space to do that, and if you only manage to grow a handful of vegetables the first year, at least you get into the right mindset. Number five, teach yourself useful skills. It not only builds your ability to survive and thrive under difficult circumstances, it also builds your confidence. Let me give you some examples of useful skills. Blacksmithing, bushcraft, growing food, medicine, first aid, and, and so on. Car mechanics, fishing and hunting, carpentry, land and sea navigation, and so on and so on. Number six, get to know like-minded people. Now, I would like to say that this is a bit of a minefield. There are lots of people out there who are a bit um, extreme. What I'm talking about is getting to know people who have an interest in agriculture maybe, people who don't want to take that snake oil and go back to the rat race, kind people, strong people, and, you know, build friendships, build community. Yeah, that's pretty much all I want to say about this. Uh, let me add that I think what we need is to take power away from the governments and big corporations and give that power back to the people. We need to strengthen the family unit and get back to a more sustainable lifestyle. And there is nothing far out or paranoid about that. It is actually very healthy. 
globalization and urbanization must stop. We, we must get back to, well, you know, nature, really. And I think a lot of the problems that we will see in the near future will come because of people being removed from nature. I believe that having millions of people living in concrete boxes, breathing the same air, and pumping them full of propaganda news and silly reality TV is a recipe for disease, unhappiness, and also a weakening of the human race. We were meant to be out here, in nature. We were meant to be free. Not controlled, not tracked, but free. Yeah, I think that's all for now. Thanks for watching the video. Um, if you are not already a subscriber to this channel, then please consider subscribing. And um, yeah, I'll have my cup of coffee now. It's cold. Um, yeah, have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Take care. Take care of yourself and your your loved ones. And. Uh, We'll talk soon. Bye.